How's it going guys? Winter Kills here. Welcome to another post commentary feature match. Here we have Dino versus that of Invoked Dogmatica. Um, yes, this was pre -ban list. Um, I believe the only thing in here that is uh, been changed is the counts of Call by the Grave, but other than that, nothing else in the core strategy has been hit by the ban list, so I figured of course it was still worthwhile to show you guys this match because it is a pretty interesting matchup. Uh, Dino is a very uh, consistent and very, very powerful deck. So we will see how it fares against that of Invoke Dogmatica. But it looks like his turn is cut short by that of Cyframe Gear Gamma uh, on that Ecclesia. So he'll set three back row, and that will do it for his turn. He'll start things off with Fossil Dig. Must be nice. Will he grab that of Misk? Will he grab that of Obi Raptor? Miscellaneous Saurus has become more and more of a just absolute trump card i don't even know what else to call it it's just it's it's such a powerful card that takes literally like zero investment i mean you discard it to the graveyard to protect all of your dino monsters from their activated effects of the opponent and then you can banish from the graveyard just itself to summon out archosaur that pops a baby in the hand you're grabbing double evolution pill you're getting ovi raptor it's just so powerful our dogmatica player will have that of uh the cosmic cyclone for lost world luckily He'll try to use Obi Raptor. Infinite Impermanence is going to be activated in response. And lo and behold, there's that Miscellaneous Saurus to say, No, my Obi Raptor's going through. Not today, good sir. Um, and uh, I actually do want to mention that I am redoing this commentary. There were a few things that I noticed afterwards that I want to explain and discuss for you guys watching at home. Just to help make more sense of it and to help sort of um, uh, teach some things, I guess. So... We're going to see Miscellaneous Source activate in the graveyard now because, I mean, it's already stopped in infinite and permanent, so why not go ahead and go a little bit further and summon out a Petit Tyranodon from the deck that will destroy itself during the end phase, which is fine because you know what he's going to get with it? Dino Wrestler Pankratops. That's right. One of the best spot removal cards released in recent times. And we'll see a rank 4 play here for none other than Evolzar Dolka. Walking Solemn Strike will swing in for 2,300 points of damage. He's already down 1,000 from that of Cosmic Cyclone. We're going to see some things activate here in the end phase. Petiti Ranadon going to get destroyed by Miscellaneous Effect, sort of resolving here. And uh, he's going to decide he wants to activate Dogmatica Punishment in response. He's going to go ahead and send a copy of Titanoclad to destroy that of Evolzar Dolka. So this will... Secure a search in the end phase. Whilst the Pankratops is hitting the field, he's going to add that of Dogmatica Ecclesia the Virtuous. I don't actually know its full name. I believe it's Ecclesia the Virtuous Dogmatica something. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. We'll just we'll just call it Ecclesia for now. So he'll draw for turn here. Looks like he's going to go ahead and pick up a copy of Cyframe Gear Gamma. Bittersweet to see that card right now. Um, it'd be good if he had maybe a copy of Nadir Servant. He tried to ash it. You know, he can go ahead and get himself a free level 8 Synchro on the field or access to Halka Fibrax, whatever it may be. Or whatever you're feeling at that point, I suppose. So, looks like he'll add a copy of Maximus. Which, um, Maximus is a pretty scary card. Um, especially nowadays. Everybody's aware that this card exists. And some decks, specifically like Dino, we know have an extra deck filled with cards that they don't really care too much about. Because it is a deck that has been known in the past to play pot of extravagance um, and play it very very well because uh, they really only need just a few cards if you're playing the combo variant you really only need like three cards you need Reprodocus, you need that of simorg and like link karibo i think that's like really about it um so he's already got his two targets picked out that was very quick and that's also a sign to be a little bit worried when your opponent goes to their extra deck after they've been maximist and they've already picked their targets before you've picked yours uh, it's a little uh, bit of a moment to kind of start sweating. Uh, and yeah, of course, there's Entis and Cyber Dragon Nova. Uh, no interruptions on field. Invoked Engine being a little shy here in game one for our Dogmatica player. So uh, he's going to go ahead and, and resolve Apcalone, Entis, and he's going to chain his Pankratops to clear both his cards, the Maximus and the Ecclesia. He's also going to remove one with the Entis and now resolve the Nova. To summon that of Cyber Dragon, or uh, 
Mechaba, not Cyber Dragon. Uh, he resolves Apglone here, and he does not discard for Apglone. Apglone says when it says the graveyard, you can add a Shadal card, then discard a card. So, a bit of a hot cheat there. You do have to discard. I believe that is probably one of the, if not the most common Dogmatica hot cheat slash misplays. So, always make sure your Dogmatica opponent is going to discard for their Apglone. Otherwise, they cannot resolve the effect. Or they're just going to discard that Schism they added, because that's what they would technically have to do. Um, and we're going to see a gamma being activated on that mechaba since he did try to use misc um i don't know he tried to negate the schism with uh mechaba rather um and then he's gonna negate the mechaba with the gamma uh, and he'll get a winda on the field uh we're gonna see ovi raptor and uh fleur de lee i think illegally hitting the field here um i don't think he can technically actually summon fleur de lee um actually no he can summon it, but um, he does not uh, have the ability to negate uh, the Obi Raptor, so he didn't really need to pitch Miscellaneousaurus there because um, he needs to have another Dogmatica card in the field to, to be able to non-target negate something. But it doesn't matter. Mm -mm. You know why? He's got two Dino Monsters in the graveyard. You know what that means. He's at 4,700. It looks like... We're going to game two. That's what that means. That's what that means. You see UCT at this point. It means, hey, next game. Okay, GG go next. Um, because those Cypher monsters all... Well, they did stop a uh, Mechaba from negating an illegal shit all schism. Uh, you know, they're just going to add, you know, free 2,000 life points off of his life points, I guess. But we're going to head into game two here. And uh, with that, I do want to mention a quick shout out to Imperium Duelist. Great way to support the channel if you guys want to pick up amazing playmats, dice, deck boxes, sleeve, binders. Their newest edition, new binder out today. Check out their site down below and you can get all that stuff for 10% off using that discount code WINNERKILLS10OFF. And, of course, if you guys are buying anything on TCG Player, do not forget to use my affiliate link down in the description below. So, Dogmatica going first, setting two, passing. Dino setting one and passing. Dogmatica setting another one and passing. And uh, we'll see if Dino can actually do something here on turn three. Um, not very often do you see a free turn three arrive that quickly. Usually a lot more combo involved. But we're going to see Lost World get started here. Does he have another Cosmic Cyclone? Lost World is one of those cards that every time I see Dino play, and every time I have to play against the deck, it, the card just seems... Uh, better and better every time. Getting that free token to turn off things like Impermanence uh, and Effect Valor. Um, and then you also have, uh, you know, the ability to turn off cards like Evenly Match, Lightning Storm, etc., etc. Like, it's just, and then give you free access to, uh, you know, Baby Sarasaurus in the deck. It's great. Uh, but we're luckily, you know, he does have Ghost Ogre here. Uh, quite a bit of back and forth with the hand traps this match. It'll be a common theme that you'll notice. Uh, a lot of hand traps. <laughs> A lot of interaction, which is good. Um, but it's just funny because at the same time, nobody's effects are resolving because there's so much interaction. But uh, we're going to see Punishment get activated to clear that of uh, Miscellaneous Saurus, sending Titanoclad, and looks like that will actually do it for our Dino player's turn. Um, actually, hold on. We're going to see Ash Blossom here. And he says, you know what? I really want my Titanoclad to go through because he's got a Gamma in his hand as well. He says, you know what? We're going to Gamma that. And then he's like, you know what? I'm going to Gamma your Gamma. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to Ash your Gamma. Um, but he actually does not use Ash on his Gamma. He actually ends up negating it with a Solemn Judgment. So a bit of a change of the mind there. Uh, but I do want to mention they did have a bit of a ruling question here. Or at least our Dino player did anyways asking, you know, would it, my Gamma go to the graveyard if it gets Ash? No, it would return to the hand similar to that of uh, Phantasme. Um, so we'd actually get to keep the Gamma. Uh, and I believe that's how that would work, since Phantasma and Gamma are both similar cards. Um, it, it, Ash isn't destroying the card. Gamma's activating in hand, so it would just simply return to the hand, I believe. But now deciding that, you know what, I'm going to keep the Ash. I'm going to go ahead and judgment your Gamma uh, in response to my Gamma. So that's how that whole chain link is activating there. I just want to clear that up. I know for the people watching without sound, they're going to be uh, kind of scratching their heads. But hey, that's what you get for not listening to me talk over these videos but either way uh, also shout out to everybody that does actually listen to me commentate over those i really actually do appreciate it uh quite a bit um but we're gonna see a top decked nadir servant which is really great um because ecclesia is really not doing a whole lot a whole not not a whole lot of pressure being applied by that of 
Dogmatica. Really hoping to see some good engine cards here. And I'll also be able to get something sent from the extra deck to the graveyard. Uh, perhaps something like that. Uh, Vapcalone. Maybe he'll actually discard for it this time. You've got Entis. Um, Construct is an option as well. Of course, if you've got any Shadal cards that are already in the graveyard. Um, but it looks like we're going to see Entis get sent for a copy Fleur de Lis, And it susses out that of a Cosmic Cyclone, which is pretty good actually here. Uh, he's going to banish a uh, Artifact Scythe. So both people sort of dodging bullets there with that exchange. Ecclesius is going to get normal summon. He's going to slap down Ash Blossom. So you know what? Take 1,500 uh, directly to the face. And uh, I believe that is going to do it for our Dogmatic player's turn. And uh, yeah, but that Cosmic Cyclone interaction there is pretty huge because that's going to stop uh, a Meltdown from getting banished. That's going to stop an Invocation from getting banished. Uh, and it also... Uh, you know, by hitting that scythe is going to prevent our dino player from popping that scythe to lock him out of the extra deck. Although he won't really care too much about that, let's be honest. Because uh, UCT is a hell of a card. Um, we're going to see an Ash, I believe, uh, get activated on a Fossil Dig or a Miss. And it doesn't matter because he has Fossil Dig regardless, which is still going to get Obi Raptor. Um, really nothing you can do about it. Obi Raptor gets normal summoned. I'm going to go ahead and activate the effect here to either send a dino from the deck or add one from the deck. Uh, because options, right? That's what we want in Yu-Gi-Oh! We want more and better options. Plain and simple. Dino, no exception. So, uh, Miscellaneous Source, I believe, has already been uh, attempting to activate this turn. So, um, no point in sending that to the graveyard. He does at try to send Giant Rex there, but it does change his mind. I believe he ends up adding Miscellaneous... Uh, possibly for a following turn, since I don't think he has much of a follow-up. And may only be looking at just a battle phase interaction here this turn uh, to run over that of Ecclesia, which is only at 1,500 to Overdraft just 18. So yeah, he's going to go ahead and add Miscellaneous here and shuffle it up. Cut the deck himself, obviously, trying to keep it clean. And uh, going to go ahead and swing over. That Ecclesia for, of course, 300 damage. Gonna put him down to 37, and that'll do it for his turn. And there he is, Alistair, the Invoker, finally getting some Invoked cards going. He's probably happy to see that. I'm gonna add a copy of Invocation from deck to hand. And, uh, gonna be able to make some fusion plays here, finally. Establish some sort of board that can interact with Dinos because they've been kind of running rampant. This entire game, too. This entire match, really. Uh, and definitely, it does need to take it to a Game 3 situation here if he, you know, obviously wants to win the match. Um, so, he's going to link off the Alistair for Al Mirage. We're going to see Invocation banish Alistair from the grave and a Cypher Gear Gamma from the opponent's graveyard for either Ogodis or Mechaba. Of course, it's going to be Mechaba here this time around. And uh, Ogodis, I want to mention, very, very good fusion monster uh, for the Invoke strategy. I think it kind of fills a void that... A lot of the other Invoke Fusions really couldn't cover, so it's good to see that they have a card like that uh, in their, you know, toolbox. So, we're going to go Battle Phase here. 25 over 18, that's 700 points of damage. Going to drop him down to 48, and it looks like that will do it for his turn. Of course, Alistair getting recycled ahead. There it is, Pot of Extravagance. Just when you thought Dino couldn't be any better, they get to play Triple Pot of Greed uh, because their extra deck, they really don't care about. There are, of course, any valuable cards in there. They can just play multiples of them because, again, extra deck space really not too valuable uh for them specifically so he's gonna end up top decking that of archosaur and miscellaneousaurus which is just absolutely bonker top decks um he's gonna pitch misc he's gonna negate with mechaba as he would so how's he gonna follow it up normal summon that of animadorned archosaur um i don't believe i i i don't know if he's actually attempting to activate the effect here He's going to put Fleur de Lis on the field again here. Um, and if he's attempting to negate it, uh, he actually cannot even legally negate it. So I don't know why he's summoning the Fleur de Lis. Because um, he doesn't have another Dogmatica monster on the field. Uh, but it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Dino's like, you know, if you're going to hot cheat me, it doesn't even matter because I have UCT. I, ha I just have him. It doesn't matter. He's here now on the field. And you've just given me another monster to run over. Um... Although he's lucky here because Al Mirage can remove itself from the field to protect a monster from destruction via card effect. Uh, so uh, that's nice, at least. But yeah, uh, the Flirtly says 
Uh, quick effect, you can special summon this card from your hand. Then, if you control another Dogmatica monster, you can negate the effects of one face-up monster on the field until the end of this turn. Um, so yeah, does not have another Dogmatica on the field. Uh, beware uh, Dogmatica players and uh, people playing against Dogmatica if they try to hit that flirtily on the field. If it's just by itself, it actually is not a threat to you because they need to have another Dogmatica card. So... Biggest, I think, if take away anything from this entire match, if now is the only time you're listening to me talk, this is pretty important. So we top decks Meltdown, which is an absolute godsend here. And I'll tell you why, because he's going to go for Invoked Agodis, and it activates on Summon, so he cannot activate cards in response to the Summon of a Fusion Monster. Uh, so a pretty big interaction here, and this falls on the fault of both players, both of Dino and Dogmatic player here. So he's going to... He's going to change his Banish targets for Algodis. He's going to Banish Entis instead of Mechaba. Keep that in the graveyard. But he's going to try to use Algodis' effect on Summon to pop that of uh, Conductor Tyranno. He's going to chain Misk, which he technically cannot chain because he cannot activate cards in response. So that's the game right there. We could have gone to a game three technically, but I doubt it matters. Um, well, let me let me explain one thing real quick. Our, our Dino player could have technically just used that misc uh, on the activation of Invocation uh, or on the normal summon of Alistair and just pitched it to kind of give himself a protective coverall for the rest of the turn. Then he would have been, been fine and the outcome of the game really wouldn't have changed. So uh, it really doesn't make too big of a difference there at the end, but just know that he technically couldn't have responded to that invoked Algodis. But that is going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Um... I, I wanted to redo this commentary because there was a few mistakes that I caught after the fact that I just didn't feel too right, um, you know, uploading it without addressing them here in the actual video. I'm sure there's going to be like three comments I'm going to guess maybe. Right now I'm going to take bets. If you're still listening, this will be kind of funny. We can be in on this together. Three comments um, addressing things that I've already talked about in this video, but let's see if it happens. This would be kind of a funny thing, but I'm just, I'm just joking around, right? Don't take anything I say too seriously, but I hope you guys had a good day or are having a good day. Thank you for watching. Uh, consider again, supporting the channel by, uh, you know, checking out the links in the description or hitting that join button as well. And yeah, as always guys, winner kill is signing out. We'll see you guys in the next one. And of course, a huge shout out goes to our Divine Level channel members here on YouTube, Academic Thick, Travis Harris, Zors, and Cadillacs84. Thank you guys so much for uh, your continued generous support.